This is the interesting slide, I think. I started my career here, and just about that time, I jumped to one of the other ones. Um, there's almost nobody left. Um, you know, we started the year with 12 large pharmas. We're going to end with nine. Um, consolidation is taking over. There has to be some differentiation. There has to be some response to the marketplace. And I actually believe it's getting ahead of um, uh, really some of the conditions, right? Differentiating your product. And I think we saw it on Pete's slide, that corner differentiation. Um, I think there's a new technology that's coming that's going to really help with that. Actually, two, two of the technologies are really going to help you differentiate your product, both the products you have and the products you're designing and, and are coming down the pike. All right. Um, goodness, apple pie, we're at a tipping point, Malcolm Gladwell. The, the reality is that, you know, this is what Pete talked about. This is 1965, 95, and 2015, right? Here comes the wave of baby boomers, right? Um, this is from the American Heart Association, right? The interesting thing is our healthcare system had, you know, uh, the, the onset of, cardi um, uh, of cardiac disease happens right about here. Here comes that wave, right? In the next uh, 20 years, this wave of people that have diseases are going to hit the healthcare system, right? Good for you, right? Customers, we had a lot more customers, and they're living longer, right? We went from here to here to here. That's life expectancy. People that are staying in the system longer. So lifetime treatment happens to kick in, or when you have onset of disease, longer treatment, better therapies. That's all going to be part of it. But the challenge is going to be how do you uh, get to the folks that need the right treatment? And, and that's the personalized medicine portion. Now, I'm going to tell you two things about your future. The, the things are happening right now, and these are going to be key in terms of how you change your business or how your management changes your business. And um, uh, one of them is EMR, right? Well, I'm pharma. I mean, this is, you know, era thing. Um, uh, this is going to be huge for your business. It's going to be huge in terms of uh, the way you use data, the data that's going to be collected, the information about patients, the way physicians are going to interact with patient data. And, and it's going to enable um, not only lifetime care, but, but really understanding the dynamics about who has what potential for disease in a given area. And the other thing that's going to matter to you is going to be single molecule. Well, what is single molecule? What does that mean? This is really the third generation of sequencing that's going to happen, right? This is what's going to be the, differentiation, the, the differentiator based on a single individual. What makes them unique, right? This is, the, this is the, 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 the baseline human genome, the evolutionary SNPs, the, the, all the pieces that make an individual an individual and what therapies they may need now or in the future. So, when we think about the transformation of healthcare, you know, we're going from, from sort of symptomatic treatments up towards lifetime care, right? And these, these evolutionary technologies are starting to happen right now. And again, we have, we have point technologies and partners that we're working with in every one of those segments. The key here is we start to move up this evolutionary pathway as we start to generate these EMRs, as we get larger and larger uh, pieces of information that include genomic data, uh, this combination of, of a genotypic and phenotypic data, right? What do you look like from a profile and how do you live your life, right? That combination en masse will allow for predictability of care. And it's only through EMR implementation that this is going to happen. Um, so this is the only thing that's going to look kind of like an ad. Um, but on September 10th, we launched um, a physician practice program from the hospitals to the affiliated physicians in a given community in the U.S. Um, the stock, our stock price jumped 7% that day. Um, about $2 billion of capital got added to Dell with that announcement. And the reason was um, the focus is around solutions, right? That we're, we're helping people that can't pull this stuff together, right? A doc doesn't have an IT department. They don't, I mean, it's, it's their cousin if they're lucky, right? If something goes down, they don't know what to do. So they can't shift from paper to electronic unless there's support there. And so we put together a program for that. That's really a soup to nuts, that's affordable, and they can actually um, really um, just get it. And it, 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 
um, really fits the way the funding model works. But the key on this is it's hosted. It's a multi-tenant hosted environment. Well, what happens when you have multi-tenant hosting? If you're not familiar with that, it means that you basically have one server somewhere in the cloud or somewhere in, in a hosting facility, and you start to put these physician practices in this organization or in this in this server setup. So then one point of interoperability to an HIS system to a hospital, now you have complete interoperability in a given region, a private HIE. If this hospital connects to another hospital, you now have a Rio or, or a regional HIE. And if any of those can connect across state lines or possibly the VA, you now have a national health exchange. So, so this is that interstate highway, state road, county road kind of thing, and we're building the county roads. We're going to start to get information that can be fed up to start to work nationally. And now all of a sudden you're thinking, wait a minute, if we're going to put systems that could mine this data or access this patient population or look for specific profiling, we could really start to have some predictive science around it. Within these given um, systems, the, the exchange is really what's going to be key. The ability to start to look at outcomes analysis for payers, the ability to start to look at um, uh, spending patterns, prescribing patterns, all the, th the types of work that we're doing, but extend it out, right? Single Molecule is the third generation of sequencing. We have a partner in Illumina, but we also have partners with Life Technologies and some of the other single molecule companies out there. Um, the Illumina box takes a look at a single molecule of DNA. The old molecule used to cut it up. And it basically coats it with four dyes and runs it down a channel and, and takes a snapshot of it and then analyzes it. It eliminates a lot of the errors in the old system. It, it, it can actually do it when, very, very quickly. So they can generate a terabyte of data in about 30 minutes. They can do a human genome for about $20,000, right? The first human genome took seven years and cost a billion dollars. Now they can do it in about four weeks for 20000 but within about 18 months, really maybe two years, they're going to generate about 10 terabytes of data every 30 minutes. And they're going to do a human genome for about $1,000. So why does this matter to pharmaceutical companies, right? Isn't this a really far out there researchy kind of thing? Um, not really, right? This is what's going to differentiate a given individual. It's also going to be a key indicator of what therapies they should be on. The key is um, medical differentiation, right? Um, uh, we talk a little bit about 30% of patients don't benefit from medicines. Um, we don't differentiate well of, of, you know, most clinical trials are run on males between 40 and, 40 and 50. So if you're a female, that's not necessarily appropriate. If you're 25, it may be different than if you're 40. Um, Ethnicity plays in effect. I mean, all these things are excluded from sort of the clinical trials. And, and when the drugs are launched, that's when these things show up very often, right? It's on mass that we start to see problems occur. And so if we have the ability to do some testing on it earlier or differentiate individuals based on drugs, then, then you know, really that's the description that allows you to differentiate your product for the FDA, right? So we have about five today where if you have a test, then you can get the drug, right? Herceptin, Gleevec, Herbitox. These are key differentiators. But what's different is, for the given test, um, you can hold the patent on the test. And it only takes one clinical trial and takes about 18 months to two years. But you hold the life of that. That's really the key, right? So the diagnostic test becomes the differentiation for your specific drug after your patent is expired on the, on the material, on the, the new chemical entity, or the, the, use, the, uh, the use patent. Just, I don't, I've been talking about this for a while. Nobody seems to, to catch it. But you know, um, let's see, I hold the patent. Uh, I lock out generics because I don't give them my patent or my, my test, and I don't. Anyway, thank you very much for your time today.